Okay, so to begin electrochemistry. So it's left or Monday and cheese? Yes. Yep. That's sad. Thanks. What is the name of the test? Not have you know book. Right. Oh. Three Fridays from now. Yep. I'm looking at it. Yeah. Solid. <laughs> Sounds good. So electrochemistry is all redox chemistry. And when I say redox, people say, oh, not redox. But oh, no. the good news is we're going to make practical use out of redox chemistry. And you don't have to do all the half-page balancing of uh, redox equations like we did before. So it's not so bad. We do definitely, though, have to know what it means for something to reduce and what it means to oxidize. So I remember I told you the, uh, the little memory trick. Leo the lion. Leo goes, grrr. Losing electrons is oxidation, gaining electrons is reduction. We have to remember that. We have to know in an electrochemical cell who's gaining the electrons, who's losing the electrons, so that we know which direction the electrons are flowing. Yes? Yeah. yeah, you can also use that oil rig. Yeah. I like Leo, it's just a thing. Yeah, oxidation is losing, reduction is gaining. Oil rig. Yeah. I like that. I like I like that. So we also have to remember that oxidation does not ever occur on its own and reduction doesn't ever occur on its own. They have to occur simultaneously. So that something that's losing electrons, there's something there that immediately gains the electrons. Uh, it's not like the oxidation lose electrons, they kind of go off and something else maybe would take them. They occur together. Electrons are lost by one thing because they're gained by something else. Well, law of conservation of energy. That's what this is kind of conservation of electrons. Yeah. How many chapters do we have left after this? We'll have seven. Uh, after 18, then we'll have a test. And then we have chapter 8, and it's going to have a little bit of 9 and 10 in it, but that's it. What's chapter eight? Oh. So we have our last three chapters starting today. What's the chapter? We got electrochem and then quantum mechanics like um, electron configuration. It's not bad. Because uh, it's all review pretty much. And then uh, bonding. And that, that takes us to the AP exam. Bonding. The last thing. Assuming I pass the class. Somebody told me that AP Chem is one of the few AP courses that still remains somewhat stressful after the oh, Why is that? I'm sorry. I don't think it's stressful. You don't have homework or anything like that. There's a lab project, and most of it is is low stress. The last part of it, though, I'm going to give you a solution, an unknown solution. It's got a bunch of ions in it. You have to identify what's in it. Um, and so, depending on how smoothly your lab experience goes, it may be stressful or not. High voltage electric share to get the amp. Yes, Jess. What's the final exam? When? Like, what is it? Final what exam, he's asking. The final exam is the Friday before the AP exam. Okay. So, like April 30th oh, or whatever what? that Friday is. Yeah, it's going to be just a normal class day. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to have. Normal class day? No, I mean, it's not like the length of a, an exam day, oh. not an hour and a half, it's just a 55 minute class. So it'll be a multiple choice section of everything that we've done. Okay. Some Ever. sampling of them. Like, yeah. like first semester? Everything, yep, yep. The reason that we do it like this is so that it just helps you to study for the AP exam. Yep, Mika, you had your hand up. Am I going to do the lab? Oh, yes. And you can even, uh, do the seniors have to do the lab? Until you leave, yeah. And even after you leave, you can still come back. I mean, you'll be waking up about this time of day. <laughs> um, so what are we going to be doing the day of finals? Like actual finals? Okay. We'll have a lab to do that day. What? Jesus Christ. Yep. Yep. What will you grade it? Will it be a fun lab? Fun for me. That's not so you like to look at Yeah, we will get A that like day, like the next day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we are.
at uh, electrochemistry. Now, I want you to consider a very simple redox reaction, um, zinc reacting with an acid. So zinc gets put into an acid, the hydrogen ions react with it. Uh, this is a single replacement reaction. We don't see what the counter ion there on the hydrogen is, but like it say it's HCl. So uh, zinc reacts with the hydrogen. There's an exchange of electrons. How would you describe the flow of electrons? How would you describe the flow slash transfer of electrons? Go ahead. Like the H2 is now zero, and like the zinc has that charge that. Like it's, so like the H2 is like losing two electrons, and the Z has. Wait a minute, don't, H2 losing would be having the reaction go that way. No, no, no. Just well, tell me. Like H is, the H like gives off its electrons to become H2, right? So that's no. not. The so zinc not, gives its electrons no. to hydrogen. No. How is the zinc changing? It's got you have neutral zinc here, and then it makes a plus two ion over here. So, so what happened to the electrons of zinc? Did it lose or gain? Yes, it was the zinc that lost electrons. How many electrons does hydrogen ion have? Two. Uh-uh. 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 Zero. Right. Zero. <laughs> hydrogen, when it's neutral, has one electron. But when it's an ion, it has lost its electron. It makes it positive. Well, it loses one electron. It only had one to lose. So this thing doesn't have any electrons. So it can't lose any electrons. It's got nothing to lose, so to speak. So yeah, the zinc loses two of its electrons to become positive two. They go to the hydrogen, which takes them and makes hydrogen neutral. But hydrogen, as you know, is diatomic. That's why we needed two hydrogens to join together, bubble up and out. So the answer would be, the zinc transfers electrons to the hydrogen. Um, and that process, those two processes happen simultaneously. How was your lab in GBBE? Oh my god. You know, <laughs> so just a smile and no words. That's, that answers the thing. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah? DNA? Do you smell like potatoes? Or is it's never too late to find a new lab group. No, not my group, don't worry. I would never follow it. Oh, and that not in here, but yeah, in sorry. The, oh, I see, yeah. Okay. Now I want you to check this out. Everybody look at what I have up on the board. Uh, don't even look at the words yet. I just want you to consider this system, the picture that I have. Um, we have the same reaction, zinc reacting with hydrogen. Now we know that zinc will transfer electrons to the hydrogen. If we separate those two processes, the oxidation can happen in one container, the reduction can happen in another container, and we'll just connect the two with a wire. What happens is I have a bar of zinc on this uh, side, in this beaker, that is immersed in a solution of zinc sulfate. Over here, we have a platinum bar. Uh, that's what that says, PT for platinum. And uh, that's immersed in a solution of hydrochloric acid. Now the reason we use platinum, there's two reasons. One, platinum is pretty non-reactive, so it's not going to corrode or, or get involved in the reaction. The second thing is that it's a very good conductor of electricity. So the electrons, remember zinc is losing its electrons, it's oxidizing. The electrons flow out of the zinc, and then they come over here and go into the platinum. And when they come into the platinum, the hydrogen ions are, are very willing to go over there and take the electrons so that they reduce. And what would you observe over here in this beaker? What would you see happen? Hmm? Bubbling, right. The hydrogen makes hydrogen gas, and you'd see it bubbling out. It would bubble right from the platinum, because the hydrogens migrate over there, and then they form the hydrogen molecule right on the platinum, and then bubble off of it. Because the hydrogen has to be on the platinum to be able to take the electrons from it. What would we see over here? What would the zinc be doing? Electrons are leaving the zinc. So the zinc, do you remember what the chemical equation was? It makes this. What does zinc 2 ion look like? Something that's like aqueous. Yes, it would have to be aqueous. So what would we observe the solid zinc doing? It's dissolved. It's dissolved. You'd see it getting small if you watched it for long enough. 
So this side over here, it's losing electrons, becoming ions, it dissolves. And the electrons are coming over here where the hydrogen can grab on and bubble up. So that's our, our reaction that's happening in two different compartments. Yeah? Wait, so what's the wire? Oh, the wire would be some metal wire that can conduct the, uh, allow the electrons to flow through it. Copper is the most common one that we use. All right. So um, this is kind of the beginning of an electrochemical cell um, in which that transfer of electrons is kind of harnessed with the wire. And we can attach things to the wire and have that flowing charge. That's the big deal about uh, what happens in this wire. If the electrons are moving through here, we're going to be able to take advantage of it. Moving charge actually is doing work. Uh, and so that work can be harnessed and run a motor, or it can heat up something like a light bulb and run a light bulb. But mostly in, in this, um, in, not I shouldn't say mostly, but a very big application of it is it, it allows things to move. A fan can blow with the, with the motor that it's attached to, or um, you know we can run a a hair dryer or whatever uh, because of those moving electrons. So that's why we care about this. This is the beginning of a battery. Now the way this thing is drawn, if I just have this set up, uh, no current will flow. I could wait and wait and wait. I wouldn't see any bubbling over here. I, I wouldn't see anything happen. There's something that's missing on this. And what's missing is this. As the zinc, oh and by the way, let me just say one other thing. This zinc sulfate, people are saying, like, uh, how, what is that sulfate doing there? Um, the zinc is not just in pure water. It's dissolved in a solution. Or, sorry, it's not dissolved. It's sitting in a solution of zinc sulfate. Normally, uh, we will express our, our drawings as if they're under standard conditions. Standard conditions means that all of the solutions have to be one molarity. So you'd already have some zinc ion in there. It's kind of like we're starting with some product already there. It's a little bit weird because zinc ion is a product but we would start with it. The HCl would be one molarity too. The Cl is going to wind up just being a spectator, right? and so is the sulfate. But it's there, so I drew it. Now, as this reaction happens, as the electrons leave and the zinc dissolves, what happens is more zinc ions are going to be put into the solution. One thing that nature will not do is it won't build up charge in a solution. So. That's why this reaction just won't occur the way it's drawn, is that um, it's not going to allow zinc ions to just 